actually I had uh, almost the same time, same talk uh, as last year in this, in this room. Um, I hope if you heard last year, you don't get really bored uh, by this one. Uh, so, um, I'm going to talk about CPC and uh, the reason because we have the Higgs and a lot of people say that it's over and uh, we should do something else. Uh, well, whether this is true or not, I think different people have different opinions about this. And also, we were people were discussing uh, whether we should wait for the uh, HC or high HC to uh, to de determine where we are going or which machines we should build and, uh, and uh, what is the direction of the future. And also, people were discussing uh, IRC is uh, is the future and. Uh, and uh, and we have some uncertainties there. We should we should we should do it to push it, or we should wait, and, and so on. So there are a lot of questions and uncertainties now, and uh, and really uh, uh, the future of high physics. Uh, um, there's a big question here. So uh, let's see why we believe uh, we need a new machine. So uh, that's because uh, uh, the stand model is not really the uh, end of the story. Uh, we know there is a hierarchy of problems that I don't need to expand here. I think everybody knows in this room. We have also fine-tuning problems and uh, with that kind of uh, subtraction that uh, nobody believes this is uh, very natural and that this is, uh, uh, this is uh, the word and, uh, and we should have some uh, uh, new physics to, uh, to, uh, to settle this. And also we know that the mass of the Top and the Higgs settle our vacuum into a so-called metastable region, which is also very strange and, uh, and hard to believe this is really the, the truth. And also we have uh, no uh, dark matter particles in the standard model and uh, no uh, uh, explanation for the, uh, uh, no, the no uh, sufficient large CP effect in the standard model to explain the matter matter, -matter symmetry. And we also have neutrino problems. We don't know how to describe neutrinos in standard model at this moment. And also we, uh, we have the unification of the high energy. So many of these issues, some are evidence, some are kind of beliefs. Uh, they all related, many of them related to the Higgs. Okay? So this one, this one, uh, this one, uh, kind of uh, 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 Higgs related problems for the future. So uh, we, we think that the building the Higgs factory is uh, probably the, uh, the best way or the best window for the future of, uh, of the problem. So actually thanks to the low mass Higgs, uh, it is feasible to build a, a super machines. Of course people have been talking about Higgs factories, not really the name, but Higgs factory is based on the linear collider. But Higgs, uh, with the low mass Higgs, the, uh, the circular machines is also feasible. And also has a good advantages that you could use the same tunnel for the future of the proton machines. So it is becomes a very complementary kind of approach uh, versus a linear collider. So with a, such a, a circular collider, you can do a, a Higgs factory, 250 GeV, a Z factory, 90 GeV, and also a W factory. And now it's also a, a, a flavor factory, so B and C and tau and so on. You can do a lot of uh, electric weak uh, 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 precision tests by using these machines. And, uh, and uh, in the same tunnel, just to mimic the, uh, the, uh, the successful story of LED and the HC, you can have uh, proton machines afterwards in the same tunnel, go all the way up to, uh, going up all the way up to uh, 100 TV. So this becomes a very complementary kind of approach. You have a precision uh, measurement, give you solid physics, and then uh, you have a searches, which uh, give you uh, a chance to have uh, a major breakthroughs uh, afterwards. So having a very precision uh, kind of a Higgs factory, uh, you can do a lot of things. The precision on the, on the couplings of the Higgs can go all the way up to a few percent, which is an almost a factor of 10 better than the uh, uh, HC uh, uh, kind of level. So this means that you can go all the way up by roughly a factor of 10 
to probe the new physics. And this is a, the level of, uh, say, QTEV. So you can see that, generally speaking, the uh, uh, CPC has uh, a factor of time improvement on the precision uh, for all the couplings. And in particular with the coupling of the Z, which has an uh, improvement over, it's, not, it's more than 100, it's several hundred, even thousand. So having such a precision, what do you do? Okay, so uh, uh, there are a lot of things you can do. You can do the precision test, and you looking for the deviation. But the one particular thing you could do is to look for the, the electric uh, weak phase transition and try to understand the nature. So with the, uh, the kind of set couplings of uh, Higgs, uh, you could look at the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, loop diagrams and uh, you could have a chance to determine the, uh, the to have a measurement of the precision uh, to have a measurement of the self coupling at the precision of 20 30 percent, and this could tell us you that which type of the uh, uh, phase transition looks like either this red line or this uh, green line, and this has uh, very uh, huge implications to the uh, to the uh, uh, universe, uh, universe the cosmology and. Uh, and, uh, and the universe evolution. Uh, another possibility to look at the, uh, the, uh, the sh uh, to distinguish the shape of these two curves is to look at the Higgs to Z couplings. And this uh, Higgs to Z couplings, you can see that the precision of CPC is here. These are the many of the models. So indeed, that except a very small phase space, uh, most of the many of the models actually can be can be looked at. And that can be distinguished. So this really gives you uh, a, a good way to uh, study uh, the nature of the electroweak uh, phase transition. And uh, you do the combine, uh, you do the the, 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 the the fit at the Z, and you also you can improve significantly the precision on the, uh, looking looking for the deviation of the. Uh, looking for the deviation from the standard model by using so-called S and T parameters if it's really uh, exact the standard model is zero and the deviations are either in the T or the, on the S axis so this is uh, the uh, current kind of uh, limit for sensitivity and this is uh, the future so you can see that we could improve the, our understanding of the, of the test of the standard model up to by another factor of uh, 3 to 5 And you can use this machine to probe new uh, new physics. And these are the various uh, different uh, models. Uh, you can go all the way up to several tens of uh, TVs. And you can see these are other ways you can go up by a few TVs. So different uh, 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 models give you different uh, possibilities for the uh, for the for the test. And uh, and actually a direct search for the new physics can be done at these machines. And also. Uh, since Higgs can couple to the dark sector, you can actually look for the, uh, uh, the, 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 the dark matter particles in this machine. So, uh, such a machine uh, actually, uh, if you compare with other machines people have been talking about, we try to look at the size, the upgrade capabilities, the technology, technology uh, uh, maturity of the machine, and the cost of the machine and also the possible schedule. And then you compare all these machines. Uh, this is a CPC, certainly science is very good. We put say four star and uh, it has huge possibility to upgrade and technology is kind of mature and the cost is, uh, is, a red, is uh, compared to all the other machines is very low and also schedule could be uh, very, very fast. Of course, the SPPC has great size, even five star but of course, once it's built, uh, it's probably there, and it's hard to believe it could further upgrade. And the technology is uh, only two star. Of course, it's not so mature. The cost is uh, is not that great. It's very expensive. The schedule must be uh, very far. IRC is also great size, uh, hard to upgrade substantially. Uh, technology is uh, is mature. Uh, cost is four star, schedule is five star. Five star. Well, this is random. I could argue whether it's three star or four star. It just give you an idea. Uh, 
Um, and then uh, you have uh, FCC, so don't stand up saying, why are you three star in I want four star. <laughs> Uh, FCC certainly has uh, the grid size, and uh, compared to the FCC TP, you see the same uh, as the CPC, SPPC. Uh, so everything almost the same, except that the cost for the FCC is, uh, is higher, relatively, and also the schedule is, uh, is not clear for the EE machines. And uh, for the TP machines, this is mostly talked about by people at CERN, but still, I think it got three stars. Huh? And uh, this is Click, uh, VHC, Milk Glider, and there are also a lot of people talking about, some people talking about that we should stop here and should wait for the new uh, 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 theories of acceleration, like laser acceleration or whatever. But uh, this is uh, not even stars, question mark. What is the difference in the cost estimates for FCC versus? <coughs> well, because you build, if you build in China, uh, uh, civil construction is less and uh, other cost is less. So, its uh, cost is less in China than, say, uh, Switzerland. I mean, is it the size of the ring? Or no, 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 no. Yeah, assume the same, uh, same size. And also, Geneva, Geneva area, the uh, geology is not so great. Why, uh, for a new machine in China, you can choose wherever the geology is the best. So, you could in principle, uh, uh, build a machine at a lower cost. And the CPC, again, is also a great light source. Uh, I don't know if uh, everybody saw this uh, plot. You can see that if we use the dipole magnet, this is CPC, and this is all the light source in the world up to now, and also the planned one. And uh, you see this is CPC if you use wigglers or undulators, and these are other, all the light source in the world. You can see that this is really the best uh, light source in the world with uh, uh, energies all the way up to even 100 MeV. So you never heard of with monochromatic gamma lines, uh, huge uh, uh, flux. Uh, you can actually do uh, really revolution kind of things on nuclear physics and material science and so on. It's never thought of. And uh, actually talking to these people, they, they just need some imagination. So this is really completely a new uh, 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 territory that people have to, have to explore. Uh, so uh, CPC actually uh, is a great opportunity. I hope you, uh, you were convinced. And uh, we have new physics you could explore. And also there are a lot of standard physics. You can do many, many measurements. And this is uh, uh, for sure to be there. It's guaranteed. Uh, there's no need to wait for AHC, I believe, because if AHC finds nothing, the Higgs refractory uh, actually uh, uh, could give us uh, uh, some indication for the future. And if AHC finds something, then it's a new era, but still Higgs need to be understood anyway, and you need a precision measurement and so on. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, this, this new findings, if there, it's actually a new spectrum, and the new energy scale uh, cannot be just one particle, it must be many. And uh, this is a, a, a high uh, energy proton machine is absolutely needed. And the uh, Higgs factory, and before that, actually can give us some time to develop the technologies for the, for the magnets. And also, IRC, uh, uh, people could argue at the IRC, so that's enough. Uh, I think CPC actually is a very good uh, complementary, which is not necessarily uh, 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 be a competitor of IRC, and also IRC may not only may not be enough, because uh, IRC has only one uh, uh, interaction region, so if you need two detectors, you need so-called push-pull option. And, uh, and having a CPC could help IHCC to, uh, to, to abandon the so-called push-pull option. And this could give you a better kind of uh, 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 stable operation of the machines. Having a push-pull, uh, I think from an experimental point of view, is very hard to imagine. And also, uh, the luminosity of uh, uh, Higgs uh, at CPC is higher than IRC. 
and, uh, and in particular for the Z and the Ws, the luminosity is uh, several orders of magnitude higher. So actually, if you want to do a standard model test, having combined the com uh, fit uh, combination of the of the precision test of the heck Higgs Z and W at the same time is actually a, a, a very important thing, a great thing. So uh, at low energies, the CPC has uh, has advantages. Uh, so I think the uh, the uh, a circular machine is actually uh, uh, is a great opportunity, and and and, uh, and we should we should push for that. So we completed uh, uh, pre CDR and it was reviewed and these are the, uh, the, uh, the design of the machine uh, what we presented in, uh, in the pre-CDR we start from uh, a LINAC and they inject the uh, electrons and the positrons into the booster sorry this is a Chinese slide this is old, old slides uh, so you ramp up the energy to, uh, to uh, say uh, 120 GV or 45 GV and then uh, you have the collision in the start ring. So we have to worry about the uh, the uh, in the accelerated design and how to uh, make sure that the uh, the uh, uh, electron machine and the proton machine will be uh, compatible. So we have to worry about how to uh, arrange machines uh, in uh, along the ring and also in the, in the same uh, cross section how to uh, uh, arrange the all the, the, the different machines. So you can see that this is a storage ring, this is the booster, and this is a, a C, a SPPC a, a machine. This is a, the uh, uh, the machine pipe, and this is the uh, pipe for the for the cryogenic system. So in this way, you have kind of idea how it looks like this uh, this uh, this machine. This is a, a design of the machine. So we have. Uh, Correct regions, uh, four of them, two for the electron uh, uh, collision, the electron positron collision, and two for the proton. And we have some of the parameters, and then we come up with the luminosity of uh, two times 10 to uh, 34. So we have uh, problems. The problem is the following the pressure scheme is very difficult. The total AC power is huge, uh, very high luminosity for uh, very low luminosity for the Z, and uh, uh, minor problem is the, the booster, uh, the technical issues, and also technical issues for the for the accelerator itself. The dynamic aperture is not is not uh, is not great. So we came up with the idea of so-called uh, uh, partial doubling. So in this case. Uh, you avoid the pressure scheme, so uh, one problem is a, is a way. And uh, the cost in this case is less than a whole double ring, because you only 10% of the ring is, is a double ring. And, and, and also, uh, in this case, you can put a lot of bunches into a ring, so the luminosity for the Z and the W can go to the, uh, say, 5 times 10 to 34, so to solve the problem of the, of the luminosity of the Z and W. And also in this case, you can reduce AC power with the crap width collision. So uh, uh, many of the problems in this case can be solved. So indeed, you, we calculate the luminosity by using this uh, partial uh, double ring. You can see that for the uh, for the uh, nominal 50 megawatt uh, uh, power, uh, you can see that the luminosity at the 50 kilometers and 100 kilometers. Uh, they follow this kind of path, and at 100 kilometers, indeed the luminosity is the same as FCC. This is the point of FCC. So you can see that partial doubling actually give you the luminosity, which is very uh, similar to the to the FCC uh, kind of design. And uh, then uh, in this case, it's a choice of money and so on. You have to see which one is uh, is the best. It becomes a political choice. These are the uh, parameters. I'm not going through the details, but anyway, if you have money, you can go all the way up to uh, 5 times 34. If you have no money, you can go down to 2 times uh, 34, the velocity. And we have been working on the designs of the machines, the simulations. Uh, these are some of the examples. I'm not going through the, the details of this. Uh, and also, we 
worked on the on the detector. These are the requirements of the of the resolution and the subsystems. So I skip this uh, kind of uh, technical details and uh, uh, vertex detector. And so the key issues which we are working on now are the following. The first is the actuator and the detector design. We have to resolve some of the beam physics issues, and then the aperture and so on. And then we have to work on the size selection, the signal design. This is uh, one of the key issues for the for the cost reduction. And uh, we, have, we have to work on the uh, uh, technological uh, development. So, for example, for the RF cavities, for the uh, uh, RF power, for the cryogenic systems, silicon detectors, and also the uh, uh, very high field superconducting magnet. So these are the uh, uh, R&D uh, uh, items we are working on right now. Uh, these are some of the uh, cavities we have built, five cells. So we have to have a very high Q values of these, uh, these cavities uh, using a, a new technology called the nitrogen doping. And also we have to work on the uh, thermal power extraction because uh, synchronization power of this machine is huge. We have to be able to extract all the powers out from the cavity. And also we have to resolve the, the mass production uh, kind of issues. This is a very large system, although it's much smaller than IAC, but still the same as, uh, say, XFEL in today's year. So it's a huge facility with uh, five, around 500 cavities. And uh, technically, it's very challenging, and uh, but still, it's useful uh, for the future machines. We have to, if we are able to solve these uh, technical issues, it's also good for the future. And also, this is a key factor for the cost. We are also working on the RF power. This is again another key factor for the for the cost. And uh, currently. The Clystron uh, has a similar, uh, has a, uh, roughly 60% of uh, uh, efficiency for all, all over the world. Everyone has a similar kind of efficiency, and uh, and it appears that there is a new design which could go, could increase the efficiency all the way up to uh, say 90%. So we come up with a design with a, uh, the, the realistic goal of kind of 80, to try to build the prototypes. So we have been working with the companies in China try to try to, uh, to, to do the R&D and, and the prototyping. Uh, we also worked on the, uh, on the conceptual design of, uh, of a proton machine. This is uh, important only for the compatibility issues. To make sure that the, uh, the turn-on and so on is, uh, is feasible for the future upgrade. Uh, another issue we have been working on right now is to work with the condensed matter scientists to study the uh, superconducting uh, cable materials. So uh, uh, currently people are talking about uh, mature technology used in a, uh, uh, so-called low TC kind of uh, uh, superconducting uh, cables. Uh, we have been now working with the people in, uh, in, uh, in China uh, for the high TC. Because using high TC, uh, you could have a smaller, uh, simpler magnet, uh, but the issue is the high TC material is very expensive now. So the goal for us is uh, to improve the, uh, the, the cost uh, property ratios by a factor of 10. So you increase the current density by a factor of 10, and also the cost per meter uh, you can reduce by a factor of 10. So in total, you have an improvement of uh, roughly a factor of 100. By doing that, you manage to reach this kind of cost, three to five dollars, three to five dollars per kilo amp per meter. So if this is successful, then the whole machines can be built by high TC kind of uh, uh, cables. And I believe 20 years from now, this is feasible. So we are working on the iron-based HTC cables and also uh, 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 copper-based cables uh, in both directions. And almost every, say, condensed matter scientist in China has been invited to join the effort. Uh, for the civil construction, well, it's, uh, you, you saw this before, so this is a terminal design, 
and this is surface building, and you see the underground uh, tunnels with uh, access shaft, and uh, in particular you see here we have a, a synchrotron uh, radiation uh, experimental hall here, so you have a vertical shaft to access the tunnel, and also you have, uh, say, uh, some of the, uh, of the, of the uh, beam uh, apparatus here. For the site selection, we have been working on uh, different places in uh, Jinghuangdao, nearby Beijing, in C uh, nearby Xi'an, and also in the very south, nearby Shenzhen. Uh, so, uh, for site selection, it's not final, still working on it, and uh, it, determined on, uh, uh, it will depend on many, many factors, so we believe that we were with for another two, three, four years to, uh, to make a final decision. And the total cost of the, of the project is roughly estimated to be uh, uh, four to six billion dollars. So, uh, uh, depend on, uh, of course, depend on the lens. So, 60%, uh, 63% uh, 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 are accelerators. A quarter is uh, civil construction, 10% detector and a very small fraction, one or two percent is so synchrotron creation of the Assume four beam lines. If you want to increase the beam line by factor of 10, then of course this number should go up. So at this moment, we completed a 3CDR. We identified the key R&D items, and we also have very preliminary cost estimate. And we are now working on the CDR, and uh, the funding we have right now is uh, very small. We have some from uh, IHEP and also some from uh, Chinese uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Science and Technology. We got already 36 million uh, uh, RMB approved and another 40 million uh, should be asked uh, uh, very soon. We believe it should not be a problem. And we failed on uh, 0.8 billion RMB uh, proposal. Uh, but now we are talking to the Chinese camp scientists and the National Science Foundation and try to see whether we could get some money. And this is still in the discussion. The timeline is uh, what? It's, uh, it's not real timeline, it's a dream, so don't take it too serious. Um, we finished our pre-CDR and we're working on the engineering design for the next five years and we hope the construction could start uh, in the year of 2020, between the year 2020 to 2025. So in Chinese funding system, this is so-called uh, the 14th five years plan. So uh, uh, we hope it can be done during that, during that period. Then, of course, uh, you wait for another 20 years, you can, uh, you can start, hopefully, a program machine. Uh, it has to be an uh, international collaboration. So up to now, we have very limited effort uh, from uh, from the board, uh, it is actually a very good exercise for us, and we need to build confidence for the Chinese community that it is feasible. You probably heard that we got a lot of oppositions in chi inside China, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, we uh, we uh, we have to demonstrate that we are able to do it. And uh, of course, international participation in the future is extremely important. And we certainly welcome. Uh, and also eager to, uh, to, uh, to be part of it, of the, of the international collaboration. So I believe it will be done uh, uh, very soon. And we established an international advisory board, and uh, they already ad advised us on how to form the uh, international organization. And then there has to be a new kind of way of uh, uh, organization, will be very different from CERN, very different from uh, uh, ITER, or IRC, or whatever you name it. And uh, we have to invent something new for the uh, way of uh, managing and organizing this, uh, this, uh, this project and this, uh, this uh, facility. So uh, we have to uh, uh, be uh, very creative and welcome uh, suggestions. So in Asia, we had uh, Asia Head, it's a panel for discuss the uh, the, uh, the high energy physics. We also have ACFA, uh, Asia Committee for Future Actuators. 
So these uh, uh, two organizations have uh, annual meetings, and uh, we uh, discuss the IRC and the CPC uh, uh, since both is going to happen in, in Asia. So these are the uh, statement of the of the position of the of the Asia community. So uh, we fully support IRC, and we believe this is a great opportunity and. Uh, we should uh, uh, we should pursue and also support our Japanese colleagues to get the, the, the support from the government and also the uh, the uh, CPC is also.